Hey guys, Meet Rebel Chris Tomer here with this Saturday mountain weather update. My first stop is going to be the Tetons up here. Live camera from Jackson Hole. A spectacular day. Crystal clear skies. <laughs> but it's obvious we need more snow. And I do have snow in my forecast, and it could be significant for the Tetons. Um, I've got snow in my forecast for Utah, Idaho, Montana, and Colorado. So all of that, and let me just kind of show you the setup here. So this is water vapor satellite imagery. Your drier air loft is in the oranges and the reds, and all the action is in the whites and the blues. That's your moisture loft. This is our main storm system right here. This one moving into uh, the Pacific Northwest BC. This is the one, and it's got a nice leading edge, great comma shape. The whole thing is going to dive down in the form of a cold front into the inner mountain, and that's what's going to deliver a snow accumulation and also colder air. Now, there is action behind this area of low pressure. But you know what? That takes me into my bullet points. But the problem is the trend today is to weaken the additional two storm systems. So let me catch you up here. The last uh, two or three days, I've been talking about the potential for three storm systems lined up through early November. This first storm looks to be the one that packs the most punch. The two additional storms will have snow, but they are trending weaker. So I'll show you those coming up uh, in just a second, how those look. The best snow potential for the Wasatch is late 1028 through 1029. That's when I think you'll pick up your best snow accumulation. For the Tetons, same time period, and the second storm system for 1031 into 111. So that's the way I'm seeing it. And then there's going to be a period of snow for Colorado and Montana and Idaho as well. Let me just show you the time height forecast. So this is humidity in the atmosphere. This is Loveland Ski Area in Colorado up on the Continental Divide. And this is a slice of humidity all the way up and down through all the vertical layers of the atmosphere. You can read the timeline on the bottom from right to left. So this is about a 72 to 84 hour forecast from this point forward. And what I see when I look at this is a lot of dry air for the next two days across Loveland, pretty much all of Colorado. A beautiful weekend here, but just no action. Now that changes, the green increases between 10, 11, 12, 13, 14,000 feet and even higher, uh, higher in the atmosphere. And you can see that with the green color. So that's going to be our snow production with that storm system coming in. The wind will be such that it actually lifts that air up over the top of the high peaks and helps to um, generate snowfall. And that you can see that happening on the 28th, the green increases 29th, and that would likely be the case into the 30th as well. So let me show you the jet stream forecast. Here it is by close of business today. You can see the next storm system, that dip in the jet, moving into the Pacific Northwest. And here it comes. There's Sunday. There's Monday. Here it comes. There's Tuesday. This is probably prime time. Late 28 into 29. A lot of prime time snow here for Wyoming and Utah. And it's still developing in Colorado at this point. Um, but you can see the dip in the jet. Nice. It just slides right on through and then into Colorado through 1030, and then it's gone. And here comes the next storm system. You can see the dip in the jet, but this one's rolling through the northern tier. Now, it will come to the south a little bit with snow for parts of Wyoming, northern Utah, and it may clip Colorado, but I'll show you how it kind of fades in time coming up on the forecast radar and satellite. All right, here we are on 11-1. There's another little storm system right here. You can see it moving into the Intermountain West, 11-1, 11-2. And that one also brings a shield of snow south through the northern tier. And it may clip Utah, Colorado um, on its way through. Um, so there it goes. It just moves right on through, through 11.3. And then we're under some high pressure ridging for 11.4 and 11.5, just kind of waiting on the next storm system. All right, let's time this out with the forecast radar and satellite. So here we are by 5.30 this afternoon, high and dry for the, uh, the lower 48. Everything of significance is up in the Pacific Northwest in BC. But watch what happens. Here comes our storm system, rolls to the south in the form of a cold front. So here's Tuesday. 1029 in the morning, you've got snow through Idaho, parts of Montana, Wyoming, Utah, developing in Colorado, pretty good flow over the San Juans at this point, the southwest part of Colorado. All right, so the last two or three days I've been commenting on the storm track, the track of the low pressure. It's been bouncing north and south. Today it's bounced back to the north. So what that means is it puts more emphasis and more snow production in Wyoming rather than down across the front range of Colorado. We're still going to get snow um, in the mountains of Colorado, but I was thinking about Denver in the situation. 
probably see a rain-snow mix between late 1029 and the morning of 1030. Yesterday, it looked more impressive in Denver. Today, it looks like a pretty fast shot of rain-snow, but it will bring the temperatures down um, across the front range. So there's your snow in blue. Let me push this ahead another time frame. Here we are, 1030 in the morning. Snow continues across a lot of the mountains of Colorado. There's that rain-snow mix for Denver and I-25, and then the snow's gone after that. Here comes our next storm system, diving down from the northern tier um, into Idaho, Montana. BC's got snow, and watch what happens with this. So there's that's 1031 at 530 p.m. Here we are on Friday morning at 5, snow through Wyoming, snow clipping northern Utah, probably brushing the Wasatch and the high Uintas, and then it just kind of fades it does not there's there's not much left for colorado with that but here's the third storm this one does a similar maneuver and it kind of rolls down through montana idaho wyoming with another shot of snow this is saturday 11 2. Um, watch what happens here by the end of the day now that one might survive a little bit more it does brush um, the wasatch and the hyuinas again but it moves down through and may pivot through colorado this is 11 3 in the morning and then there it is by the afternoon and then it's gone so there are three storm systems, but the main storm is the first one. The last two are a little faster moving, and they kind of focus their action across the northern tier. All right, here's snowfall, my snowfall forecast, all of today through the 28th. Um, most of the snow's up in the BC, Baker, Whistler, anywhere in purple's over a foot. Some light accumulation starting to come south into the northern tier. Here's the more active time frame. This is 1029 through 11.4. You can see what happens with this. Um, so you've got snow from all three storm systems showing up on this chart. So the snow does not all come at one time. But anywhere from probably 4 to 10 inches across the Wasatch, potentially 6 to 12 across parts of Colorado in the mountains, especially right there along I-70 and north. In the Tetons, probably looking at a foot of accumulation across the Tetons and the Wind Rivers, four to eight up in the parts of Big Sky. Uh, Brundage does well. Schweitzer gets about seven. You're looking at about a foot through a lot of the Cascades and probably four to eight up there in the parts of BC. Now, the difference from yesterday, I had some snow for the Sierra yesterday. I don't have that today. And um, the trend is not good for the Sierra looking at it today. Everything kind of pivots away from, from the Sierra. But that kind of fits with my expectation for the winter with a La Nina light in place. And this is, this is really looking a lot like that, um, to be pretty honest. All right, there you go. That's the Saturday update here, the mountain weather update. Always appreciate, appreciate you guys tuning in here. Take care and have a great day.